Mr. Harris here and welcome to a new video of chapter 12. In this video, we're going to talk about digestion in the mouth cavity. So in our mouth cavity, we have something called the salivary glands, which are already circled over here. As the name suggests, it produces saliva, which contains a digestive enzyme. So in a minute, I'll talk about what is an enzyme. But simply speaking, it helps to break down starch into sugars. So starch, as we know, is the more complex form of carbohydrates, and sugar is the more simple form. So with the help of the enzymes, so the enzymes actually help to speed up this chemical reaction where the starch would be digested into sugars. So from the more complex and insoluble substance to the simple and soluble substance, with the help of the digestive enzymes, which are present, as I mentioned, in saliva. So how exactly does this chemical digestion occur? Or how does it actually help? So let's see this experiment. So very simple, just get two test tubes, label them test tubes A and B, and pour roughly 5 ml of starch solution. And then afterwards, get one cm cube of amylase solution. So amylase is one of the names of an enzyme. Okay. So in test tube A, we have the enzyme, whereas in test tube B, we'll just add distilled water. And you can guess what's the purpose of adding test tube B. It is just to act as a control setup. So we've learned several times what is a control setup already. And afterwards, you add five drops of iodine solution. And just to mention again, in each of these test tubes, you have starch as well. So prior to adding the iodine solution, when we added, sorry, when we add iodine solution to starch, what would be the color change? Yes, they would turn from brown to blue black. So the original color, as you can see, of iodine solution is brown. And once you add it inside these two test tubes, it will become blue-black in color. We've already learned this in Form 2 and also this year. And after adding iodine solution, make sure you mix both, both the test tubes well. And then you let it stay in 37 degrees Celsius, water at 37 degrees Celsius. The reason is because the enzyme works best or works faster at a warm temperature. And roughly after 15 minutes, we will observe what would happen to the color of the solution. As I said, at this moment, it should be blue-black because both of the test tubes, they have iodine solution added to starch. So let's see the results over here. I've already had the results ready for you. So in both test tubes, as I told you in the beginning, it should be blue-black in color. color. Test tube A, which has the enzyme, well, whereas test tube B, it just has water, distilled water. After 15 minutes or after one hour, you will notice that for test tube A, the color becomes light brown or colorless, whereas for test tube B, it becomes blue black. Now, why is this such an interesting observation for test tube A? So very simple. Just like how I mentioned earlier in this video, in the presence of the enzyme amylase, the starch was digested into sugar. And as because there is no more starch present in test tube A, therefore the blue black color will disappear. And because in test tube B, of course, there's still starch present over there, there was no digestive enzyme, there was no amylase. Hence, so why, as I told you earlier, to B is used as a control setup to make sure that in tube A, the result was due to the presence of the amylase. So to summarize, the breaking down of complex and insoluble substances in food into simple and soluble chemical, uh, simple and soluble substances by chemical reactions is called chemical digestion. Okay, make sure spellings are correct over here. So. And digestive enzymes, they help 
chemical digestion by speeding up chemical reactions. So they help to speed up chemical reactions. Also, apart from saliva, where it produces, as I mentioned over here, it can it produces our salivary glands. It produces saliva, which contains the di which contains the digestive enzyme. The saliva also moistens and lubricates the food, which makes it easier to be swallowed down by the esophagus or esophagus by something by a process called peristalsis. So, what exactly is peristalsis? Before that, for the esophagus, do you remember where is the esophagus or what am I trying to say? So the esophagus is this really long tube over here. It connects, you can say, the mouth cavity to, to the stomach over here. So what is peristalsis? So as you can see, for example, when our saliva helps to moisten and lubricate the food, there's some muscle behind the food which will contract over here. The lumen, or the lumen you could say is the gap or the space that you can find in the esophagus. It becomes smaller and you can say it squeezes or pushes the food downwards. So eventually, as you can see, it's squeezing over here, it's squeezing, it's pushing downwards, and eventually it will go all the way to the stomach. Okay, so the process of the muscle contracting over here and then the lumen becoming smaller and eventually squeezing the food all the way down to the stomach is called peristalsis. Okay, so in the next video, I'll talk about how digestion in the stomach occurs. But this one, for this video, I just wanted to introduce how digestion in the mouth cavity occurs with the help of, of course, the salivary glands. Okay, so that sums up this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.